Hi everyone and welcome to Motographer channel. I'm Barry Sia and today I'm going to review the Zontes Scooter 310. Okay, so this is the this is a two-way bike and thank you Chongko for actually letting me try this bike. And let me share a bit more of my thoughts about this bike. So basically, this is not the first scooter I ride. I ride the Aprilia Mojito 125, I ride the Vespa GTS 300 and this. And I can just roughly share my experience with the scooter that uh, I feel the, the slight difference between all these uh, bikes and yeah, and here are my thoughts. Let's get to it. So here it is, the Zontes M310 scooter. So basically, how the design is like, I find that the design of the bike in front look like a transformer. Okay, a bit of blowfish style because of this white area. But overall, it's like those are modern transformer style kind of thing. And kind of like the air intake over here, you know so that it will really cool the bike when it's moving but yeah la, I mean it's transformers la, but then it feels more like the Decepticon than the Autobots you know those are uh, the villain type but I like the color I, lo I love the red the red and the black contrast so overall the design of the bike is like very modern very pointy okay and all these already come with it as you can see there's already kind of holes for your rack for your mount that means that uh, your top box or what you know straight away you can actually mount it on without like screwing from here to install there then overall yeah it comes with main stand and side stand but the bike cannot start when it's on side stand so either it's on main stand then it can start or when your side stand is up for safety reasons so this bike is also keyless as you can see there's only one button for you to start so the keyless is like the fob you know it's like a Fitbit the first thing I feel is like a Fitbit so it just look like this a small little oval one and they actually will provide you a strap when you buy the bike uh, the strap that will like put on like a smart watch kind of thing so you won't lose your key yeah in a way so I just put it at the small little pocket of my jeans so overall the the cool part is uh, what some few things that I really like about the bike other than okay normal scooter it has a nice comfortable seat you know it have a lower back support and one thing i like about a bike is other than the space okay let's look at the space below but first i just press on let me on the bike there you go you know the transformer thing so let us see the compartments so there are a few compartments of course under seat so let's press so it's all uh, like buttons to press same like the zontis 155 but under the seat I just press and there we go so this is the space okay got my clean towel this is my tripod my raincoat uh, some cloth in case it's wet you know kind of thing yeah over here you can actually fit your full face helmet uh, there's only one okay and yeah this is the one that comes with it so let me see that I can show you uh, let me check out my gloves <laughs> a little tough to show okay over here so let me see this there so for those who have actually used Fitbit before you'll find this design very familiar so the first thing I see wow this really you know it's like Fitbit kind of thing so yep here we go maybe I'll just I'll put my glove here first then the next thing is that the fuel cap location okay because i do sometimes mount 
bags behind the Vespa. So the problem is that sometimes mounts you got lots of things on the back of the seat and when you want to pump petrol you know you have to remove that in the petrol kiosk. So that's the, that's the thing that I find very leche, very troublesome. But over here, the fuel cap is in front. So to open the fuel cap, just press this button here and you can see. So no matter how much barong you have here, how much luggage you have here, all the way piled up, you still can pump petrol. So I think this is actually a very good move. The thing about this, because of this design, um, when I get up, yeah, it's a little... It will be a little high because a scooter is usually low in front and yeah Aprila Mojito the Vespa GTS this one is a little higher so usually I will just back uh, just like mount my normal sports bike from back but from the front then I have to knee up a little more that's the only thing then the, there's two compartments here one on the right I put my lock it's quite shallow okay so you can access anytime even when it's locked so don't put any valuable stuff here then another side it is actually a deeper compartment don't know whether you can really see but there is actually two usb ports over here for you to charge so you can charge your phone slot it here while riding so you it, it comes with a charger already so might as well and then i put a handphone mount here and then it will be locked when the bike is locked how do i actually lock this scooter so basically you press and hold you will hear a sound and once you turn your handlebar it's locked already okay so basically with the phone far away there's no way that anyone can start up the bike there's no way to even move the bike the downside about this is that you have to every time on the bike when you're actually shifting because if they, you are shifting and your bike is off then when you are shifting right you turn all the way left you auto lock so you are going to have some issue maneuvering the scooter that's the only thing that I find a bit leche uh, a bit troublesome but well security feature yeah so if there are cases that you actually left the bike for a while okay that you are actually moving move aside so let's say okay i just move a bit further then it will actually warn you it will come out with a beep 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 sound and it will not it will actually off the whole device so basically that's about it then the of course you need to press and hold to lock lah. and one, one thing i like about this uh, the scooter is of course the very basic security feature is this i did talk about this before in the other in my other zontes 155 review about why is this so important it actually protects us on the road because we can't be left signaling and stop you will get um you might get rear ended oh yeah and it has adjustable brake levers over here as well and yeah that's about it um and one more thing over here you can see there's a cover basically right if you notice there's not much a mounting point of course i can clamp something here i can clamp something on the window but then with this let me take it out you can access the handlebar straight so let's say you want to mount thing they they will actually um they they do provide you the the mount right over here so over here when you remove this there's like a kind of screw thing I'm not sure how this is installed and then after that you can actually mount your your phone here using this you know your whether your your phone or what with this clip back in 
So this is how they all they will provide you this when you actually purchase the bike. So at least you can access the handlebar because most of the time, okay, for scooters, all our handful mounts are usually on the mirror. We actually put mirror, then we put a ball head mount, then after that we start putting the mount up. So with this one is actually quite a good feature, they really leave a gap for you already. So you don't need to like Hey, should I, um, how should I actually mount uh? Where to mount uh? There's no screw. Maybe you can use this screw or what? When you use all these screws, you will be blocking the button. So it's kind of like no use. Alright, there's another thing that I actually missed out. It's actually over here, the food pack. So you can see over here, the food pack is just flushed into the unit system. So... Over here, you know, you just actually just uh, no need to put so much pressure to just keep it, and then when you want to pinion, you just pull it out. So the foot pack is actually quite thick, so you actually be more comfortable for your pinion to actually rest your foot. So yeah, this is the this is the part that I actually kind of missed out. So yep, that's about it. All right. Oh, wait. I need to take my glove and. Let's get this baby running. Oh man, the weather, the weather is crap again. Oh no. Oh no. Alright, so let me put out, side step out. And then, just break in and start. So, over here, you, there's a lot of interface. Once it goes set, you will see there's interface, there's clock, there's backlight, unit, language. There's also Bluetooth connection, uh, easy connected that you actually can connect to your phone. But um, currently it's full Chinese, so it is not that internationally friendly for now. Okay, so in the interface, there's clock. There's also TPMS, that's the best part. Tire pressure monitoring system. So you can actually set it, you can, you can set it to bar, you can set it to PSI or KPA. So you are able to understand your tire pressure and tire heat. So there is a sensor already built in. How cool is that? Because I actually added TPMS on my Ducati and my Hayabusa and also even for the Royal Enfield. So yeah. Alright. Now let me... I, I, I prefer PSI, so let me exit. Then also there's an interface, you can actually choose simple, casual, you know, sometimes uh, boring. You want to change the interface, go to race, you know, and uh, you can go to street, you know. It, that's different type. And how, let's see, how does the simple look like? Yeah, this is very simple. Just like that. So yeah, I kind of like street quite a bit. All right. Okay. So this is the eco mode. So you can press eco sports, you know. But I I still prefer the sports mode. Even though the fuel consumption is not so much different, but the sports mode there's slightly more pickup, more top. While economical is like is is when you throttle, it will be less sensitive. To prevent you from like over throttling kind of thing but for this bike i find all right la. the economy economy right if you throttle hard enough you also kind of pick up quite well and then the, the best part sometimes you know in singapore of course if this is a road trip ahead okay the windshield actually help a lot but when it comes to sudden rain of course you wear raincoat all these things then there is actually a lot of rain coming in ta -da 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 -da. So uh, I actually used this and adjusted my windshield, so it's just a button. So while I'm riding, suddenly sudden rain, I'm not really on my raincoat. I, of course, it's like in Singapore, this is how the weather is like. So suddenly, it just suddenly rain. Then after it suddenly gets sunny. Like what you see now, you can actually see some droplets around the bike. And then it drizzled a little bit and now it's sunny, so yeah. So when suddenly I feel the drizzle and suddenly the rain got bigger, I just 
move up the windshield it actually helped me to block the raindrops kind of thing so i find this is quite a cool feature but of course there's other means for this feature so it actually blocked the rain quite a bit and yeah that's about it okay let's uh do a bit of riding and see how it feels i feel that the uh, sitting position is quite comfortable and you know it's um the floorboard is nice to step on the thing is that the front there's actually two slanted floorboards that you actually can stretch your leg but for me it's like a bit uncomfortable it's feel, it feels still a bit tight for me but okay la, i usually will put it down at the floorboard and the back seat uh, lower back support is also great you know it helps me uh, keep my lower back more comfortable through rides and especially if you are taking this uh, scooter for a bit of longer ride one thing about this bike right is actually running on 14 inch rims front and back okay i ride the vespa gts 300 which is actually 12 inch by 12 inch and the aprila mojito 125cc which is 12 inch in front and 10 inch behind so for the 10 inch behind it's like finding a needle in a haystack you know you you are unable to really find that type of rim so with this 14 inch rims front and back it's much more easier to find that's what i feel the stock tires come with cst tires uh, they are fully china made but i'm really surprised because the china even though it's china made it is actually very grippy I mean it's quite it's quite grippy even in wet roads because I did ride this in the rain especially in this month there's a sudden rain downpour in between so when I ride through the rain I can really feel the grip I don't feel much of the um, sliding at the rear or when I actually brake a little more it, it still grips well so I'm quite amazed and it is CST tires that's the brand of it and this bike is like fairly easy to U-turn because this is even though it's a two-way bike, the frame is a little shorter. It is not as long as like X Max. So when actually when you do a U-turn, it's much more agile. It's much more easier to just clear the corner. That's why I felt about this uh, scooter. Okay, because I also feel um, it is actually quite hard uh, for longer frame to to actually do U-turns, especially when I try with my Hayabusa. Uh, with my honda phantom you tend to have to lean a little more to clear because of the long frame that's all it's just the characteristic and the design of the bike so yeah this uh, frame is short and it's easy to maneuver i can say it's really agile and it's easy to handle it's very easy to handle and even though i'm at uh, tight places i can easily maneuver in tight spaces especially in a car park which i actually face at raffles city uh, the scooter i mean the motorcycle parking lots are really cramped up so i managed to actually maneuver everything uh, inside that tight lot and oh my god over here there is actually a little start a little rain start a little droplets and it's time for me to put out my windshield okay basically the windshield is just like protecting me from the from the droplets only la, the water droplets it actually lessened down a lot okay it doesn't block fully but it lessened down a lot it's actually quite high as you can see but oh, oh well you know this the, the, there are pockets of rain clouds in between where i'm going so yeah this happened but usually after that when it's cleared up i would just press it down i i don't leave it on like that all the while so over here you can see that the scooter is really quite narrow so that i can actually like go through lane split in between the vehicles very easily so yeah it is actually more narrow it's not that bulky so it's, it has a very sleek and slim look after riding this uh, scooter for a week all i can say is that um it is is uh, is incredibly comfortable that's definitely because it is a scooter and i find that it's actually really practical in terms of um, moving around uh, especially as a photographer i keep on carrying my uh, cameras around and sometimes my cameras are smaller but i still have to carry my backpack on and 
but I can put it right below the seat. So all I can say is practical in terms of the storage system that is in the scooter, which I really like. For the Vespa, it is okay. It is a bit narrow, so um, I can put my camera stuff on this. But when it comes to helmets, well, I cannot fit in. But at least in this bike, you still can fit in. And overall, um, the windshield, the auto windshield, which is damn awesome especially when it comes to rainy weathers and of course in Singapore we cannot really ride fast but in terms of pickup I feel that the pickup is fairly quite similar to the GTS 300 and I was actually riding with my wife uh, with a Vespa GTS 300 the Zontis can actually keep up with the Vespa G 300 very easily then I also feel that it is actually a good um, delivery bike as well in terms of comfortability and power, yeah, but in terms of the fuel efficiency, I tried the eco mode and I tried the sports mode. So basically the eco mode and sports mode, the fuel efficiency difference is actually quite, uh, how to say, it's not that big of a difference. So for the fuel efficiency uh, for the sports mode is 3.9 liter per 100 km. While for the eco mode is 4.1 liter per 100 km. So basically that's the difference. It is running on a 12 liter tank. I find it okay for my usage, but it depends on how you use. So when it comes to fuel efficiency, it really, really depends on how much you throttle, how much you whack the bike. It is far different from, um, it is definitely far different from the Zontes 155G that I actually reviewed last year. That one is like 21 liter for 150cc tank. Well, this is a 12 liter for 310cc. So, yeah, you cannot you cannot compare like this. Uh. So, but overall, I find that this is a very good uh, daily bike. Okay, that is definitely a very good daily bike. So, I hope you like this video. And if there's any questions that you want to ask in uh, regarding this bike, just feel free to comment below and I'll try to answer the best I can. When it comes to the price, oh yeah, I, I nearly missed out the price. For the price, right, it is 9,900 before COE. Okay, the reason why I actually um, say before COE because uh, our COE now currently is super high. At this point of the video, it is 10,000. So, yeah, 10,000 COE. Just imagine. Yeah. Hopefully, it will actually um, lower down. Hopefully, la, hopefully, really. But now it's very high, so it based on the time of the video is 19,900. Yeah, 19,900 because of the COE. So for international friends out there, COE is our Singapore Certificate of Entitlement. So without it, we are unable to ride our bike. So own a bike as in fact. So yeah, that's for you guys out there. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next video.